tail of the tape. Brought to you by Nitro. The 36-year-old Brit against the 31-year-old American Vernon White making his UFC debut. Long time coming. Yeah, it is, and well deserved. Larry Landless, our referee. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Let's rock and roll, let's go. And Freeman, they touch, touch with glass, yep. Look out for Vernon White's front leg roundhouse kick. He throws it hard, hard to the leg and hard to the head. Vernon White, very well rounded in his submissions. He likes that flying knee as well, likes to jump into it. There's that right leg. Yep. He's got excellent heel hooks, excellent submissions, and he's a very good striker. Fought in the first ever Pancrase show on four months of mixed martial arts training. Yeah, Vernon's been around. Yeah. This guy's a real veteran. I've seen this guy fight many, many, many times. I've been looking forward to seeing him in the UFC for a long time. Whoa. Vernon just fought three weeks ago against Jeremy Horn and was well very, very good in that fight against Horn. Yeah, he lost a controversial decision. Very good fight. Very competitive fight. Well rounded. You see the guy striking, he sees the opportunity, boom, takes a takedown. Talked to Jeremy Horn about that fight, actually, Joe, and he said Vernon was just hard to control. He just kept him off balance. He was never really able to get into his game. Vernon White is very explosive from the bottom. If you have Vernon White mounted, you better hold on tight because that dude can explode from the bottom like nobody. Let's see how he does from the top here with Ian. Ian's trying to get out. Vernon has defeated Vladimir Matryoshenko. Marvin Eastman, who's on the card tonight, now he hopes to defeat Ian Freeman. He wanted to get out and stand up. That's what he's looking to do. He's looking to back up and stand up. Well, well Ian certainly doesn't want to be on his back. We know that. Vernon's not going to let him off free. Oh, oh, that's a good combination. And he tries to zero in on Ian Freeman. Now, there's that discipline that you see waiting for an opportunity to throw down and on your opponent, Ian Freeman. And you see the explosiveness of Vernon White. He snuck in through the guard with a, with a punch. I mean, that, that's difficult to do. Snuck past the legs, boom, grounded, timed it right. Grounded. He's looking for a guillotine here, but I don't think he has it. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds, heavyweight matchup. Vernon White in the red trunks, Ian Freeman in the black trunks. Freeman, his 21st match in mixed martial arts. Again, you see Vernon's well-rounded skills. Up. Looks like Freeman almost had him in a key team there. Now, Freeman never looked better than in his victory over Frank Mir in London. He did, but that's also probably due to Mir's mistake. Yes. Mir made a huge mistake in holding on to that heel hook and letting Freeman punch him. You know, youthful mistake, youthful exuberance, overconfidence. Let go of the fence. I mean, uh, Frank Mir is such a talented guy, and there were so many people blowing smoke up his butt. He thought that he was unstoppable, and Ian Freeman showed him what happens when you think you're unstoppable. Let's go. Let's go, use it. So the machine, Ian Freeman, they've got to keep going, and he goes oh, for the takedown. Take and so Ian Freeman now will work, 207. Ground and pound is what Ian Freeman likes. He spends about a month before each UFC fight now coming from his native land of England and spending the time in Iowa with the Militich camp, Joe. Couldn't find a better camp. That's the, one of the best camps, if not the best camp, in all of mixed martial arts. Pat Militich knows how to train guys. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your strength. He knows how to put it all together. And I couldn't think of a better place to go and train for a fight. Ian Freeman, if he's going to do some damage here, he's going to have to try to pass Vernon's guard. Vernon's not going to let him do any damage from here. And Vernon likes the Kimura from the bottom. If he gets a hold of one of Ian's arms, yep. look for him to try to submit him. And, and that's where you see, and, and you didn't see it actually, as you said, as Frank Mir went for the oh, heel. Man, you you see that, that Vernon White is sitting there and being patient, and Freeman doesn't want to push the pace too much and leave a limb susceptible. Now, Vernon White is a very smart fighter. He's never going to hold on to something unless somebody punches him. If, he, if he's got a hold of your heel, first of all, he's going to make sure you can't punch him. And second of all, he's going to rip your leg apart. If he gets into that position, you're not going to see the same mistake that Mir made. He's a veteran fighter. He's been around a long time. Final minute of this first round, Joe. He's got to get off the fence here. Freeman wants to push him up against the fence and just drop elbows and punches. Ian Freeman, a young 30, well, a little older than 30, 36-year-old. Didn't start fighting till age 32, but always a tough cat from a tough town, Sunderland, England. I love seeing dudes older than me kicking ass. There you go. <laughs> and these are two, these are two elder statesmen 
who are pushing the pace right now. 30 seconds remains in round number one. Go. Vernon White, Ian Freeman. You very rarely see Vernon White take any punishment yeah. in the fight. He's so smart. I mean, he's so composed. He's not going to let guys get away. Oh, going for an arm. And he rolls out of it. And the thing is, and I even asked Jeremy, I said, would there be any reason why Vernon wouldn't be ready to go on three weeks notice here? He said, no, I really, as much as I'd like to say I could put some damage on him, Jeremy said he wasn't able to do so. And so Vernon right back. And the good thing is he was trained for a fight, Joe, so he was prepared to be physically set. Remember the reason Vernon White is here, though, is because Ken Shamrock is unavailable due to injury. Ken Shamrock is here. He is with Eddie. I'm here with mixed martial arts legend, Ken Shamrock. Ken, you were supposed to be in that octagon right now, fighting Ian Freeman. For those people that don't know at home what happened, can you explain? Uh, it's training, you know, in the last uh, over about a year or so, it's blown my ACL out, so it's just progressively getting worse and worse, so I gotta go in and get it fixed so I can come back in here and do what the, uh, the original Ken Shamrock does, and that's take people down and beat the shit out of them and beat them and beat the shit out of them standing up. So when I come back, I will be bigger, better, and stronger. All right, you heard it here. Ken Shamrock will be back. Back to you. Ken Shamrock dropped down to 205 for that Tito fight. It's noted that he's a much heavier guy. He likes to fight at about 220, 225, and he's a lean guy. When he cuts weight, he's losing a lot of muscle. He, it's weakening him, and he never wants to fight at 205 Are you ready? again. Are you ready? Let's rock and roll. Let's go. Oh, Vernon doesn't want to touch gloves this time. Vernon wants to get into action here, big boy. Vernon White, Ian Freeman, second round. Oh, there's that high kick that you had talked about, Joe, but nothing happening there. Just trying to set something up. Dean looking oh, for a I shoot here. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, there's another high kick. I'm sure Ian wants to get in tight. He wants, that's what he likes to do. He likes to brawl. Right there. That's what he wants. Wow. Nice avoidance there by Vernon White. He slipped. Dude. Vernon White's a veteran. And then, see that? It counters. In the middle of the heat, he throws kicks. In the middle of the heat, he goes for a takedown. The guy, you know, he's very composed. Trying to work the knees, Ian Freeman. Freeman had alluded to the fact that the loss of his father, actually, the loss of his father when he was fighting Frank Mir in London, kind of had him messed up for a while, and he wasn't mentally ready for Andre Orlovsky, and justifiably so, but he is ready here tonight. Ian's got his back right here. He's, uh, he's just holding on. He's not sinking his hooks in, though, but this is a bad position for Vernon. Vernon's so comfortable and so uh, so good defensively, though. I don't, I don't expect him to be in it. Oh, look at this. Ian tried to roll him, tried to get the hooks in, but that's bad. It okay, nice. Nice escape by nice escape by Freeman. Back in control. Can Freeman Heavy finish hands. it? Can Freeman finish it through submission? Or will it just be something like this, Joe? Oh, he's got skills. He's yeah. got submission skills without a doubt, but he likes to punch. He's right. got heavy hands. He's a heavy punch dude. Speed against power somewhat in this matchup, and the power certainly belongs to this man. Absolutely, but Vernon's got power too, and Vernon, like I said, is very explosive from the bottom. He'll hang on, he'll wait, he'll wait till he feels you relax, and then he'll blow out of there. British champion, intercontinental champion. He stands up, Hook and, and he got his back. Heavyweight champion, and now he shows his back to Vernon White, and Vernon White trying with the ground and pound. And a couple of those uppercuts oh, are landing. And now he has the back and now on top of Ian Freeman in the half guard and a good forearm shiver and that opened up a cut over the eye of Ian Freeman that forearm opened up a cut over the eye of Ian Freeman he's still in Freeman's half guard he probably wants a pass here and either get side control or mount he's dropping some elbows down some heavy elbows A good striker like Vernon White can deliver crippling blows in a short space. He doesn't need a long windup. Tight elbow there. Two minutes, seven seconds remains here in round two. Debut for Vernon White, sixth fight in the octagon for Ian Freeman. There you go, just, just took side control. Now Vernon's in a much better position. Ian doesn't have anything here. He's not holding on to him. He's not controlling Vernon's body at all. Both he's scrambling, the, he's gonna take his back. Both of these gentlemen champions of other organizations. He's got one hook in. If Vernon gets the other hook in, this could be big trouble. He's 
trying to bring that there up. There he goes. That's the down. second hook. Let's That's see if he hook. can submit. Can he finish? No. He's got the mount. He's got the mount, though. And he's pushed right off by the strength of Ian Freeman. Ian did a good job there shaking him off. Got to be careful with the stomp. And there's a right hand that connects. Yeah, you're right there, Mike. He almost did exactly the same thing that got West Sims disqualified. Exactly the same thing. And these guys, a lot of these guys fight in a bunch of different organizations. They fight in Pride, they fight in the UFC, and sometimes they have instincts, so they just have competitive instincts. They're used to Let's stay. go, let's go. Close guard now. Yeah, Vernon wants to get out of the closed guard to do some real damage. He wants to either get side control or he wants him out. Trying to pass. He can get out of it here, he get out of it here. Shake it to the left, shake it. there you go, shake it. Shift the guard, nice and now he's raining down. Elbows. He's probably going to look to mount here or take an arm. Well, he's got 45 seconds in which to work here. Both have had their moments here oh, in this second round. Reversal. Oh, the Kimura, that's what he's looking for. See what I talked about? That arm. Yep. Vernon loves that. He loves that Kimura. Even though Ian's got his back right here, Ian's in a lot of danger. There he goes, he's out of it. All Vernon had to do was tie up a leg and secure Ian let there. Go. And he go. can tap you from that command. Let it go. This is where you see it, the chess match, Joe, from, from maybe a, a ground and pound attempt to a submission attempt to a knee attempt. These guys are working so many different disciplines modern day. And there's the high kick. Oh, an uppercut. Looks like Vernon White was a bit gassed there at the end of, of round number two. They both blew out a lot of steam right there. Look, Ian's getting up slow. He wasted a lot of energy. He expended a lot of energy. I shouldn't say wasted because he did a lot of good damage there. Excellent round. The both of them are very tired here. Here we see Vernon had his back. He had one hook in. Now he's mounting him, dropping down some elbows. But Ian shakes him off. Good job by Ian Freeman in escaping that. Man, that was close on the stomp. Here he almost has him in the, he almost has his arm, but Freeman stands up, Vernon gets out of him. As soon as you get your underhooks, you're escaping fine, but you've got to get it instantly. That knee bar attempt is good. This is interesting, huh? Jeremy up. Horn in the corner of exactly. Ian Remember, Freeman. Jeremy Horn just fought Horn Vernon down, White three weeks ago. Good. Yeah, one if anybody round, has any experience with uh, Tiger White. Round. Jeremy Horn. Let's go, hustle up. 25 minutes brawling with him. Now, moments ago, the man who would Let's like go. to leave with the belt, the Iceman, Chuck Liddell, here at the Thomas and Max Center in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Later tonight in the main event, Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture for the UFC go. light heavyweight title. He looks like he's going for a walk through the mall. He is a very confident and very relaxed young man. Third round underway here. Vernon oh, White, Vernon the spinning oh. fist. Oh, big punches. And a good knee he got by cracked. Ian Freeman. He tried some wild stuff yeah, there, he and he that got caught. That was Shoney Carter-like, wasn't it? Very much so. Shoney Carter against Matt Serra with that spinning back fist. Yeah, he got a little wild there, and Ian patiently waited and then took advantage of it. Does a fighter get wild because he's frustrated that his game plan is not working? You know what? Sometimes you just get wild. You feel it. You come back after the round is over. You rest it up. You know, uh, in between rounds, and you feel that you got a charge. You're like, I'm just going to come out there and swing. And uh, Vernon is uh, originally a Taekwondo stylist. He does a lot of. Uh, oh, there he goes. Vernon's got the mount. Let's go, Ian. And now he's trying to take advantage. Freeman. He's going for a heel hook. Vernon's going for a heel hook. And, and Freeman's going for a heel hook as well. Simultaneous submission attempts. You know what, though? Vernon coming from the Lions then he's had Ken Shamrock slap those things on him yep. for about 10 years. He spun he with him well, didn't he? Oh, absolutely. And, and Freeman is in grave danger of falling into a trap there. And now the competitors continue to go. The crowd reacts here at the Thomas and Max Center. 340 remains in round three. Looks like Vernon's got a guillotine. No, he's down. Oh, he just avoided the left there. This guy's very weary. This is oh, wrong. my. Let go! You hear Larry Landless center, getting him to let go of that fence. Freeman's gasp, but you know what? That guy's just got heavy hands. Well, they're going to have to do something here. Even when he's tired, he can hit you with one of those heavy hands and rock you. And when you are tired, you're more susceptible to the rocking having a larger effect, aren't you? Absolutely. Oh, good takedown. He just dropped down. Good takedown attempt. Controlling, staying on top. They're both gassed, both very windy here. Taking a little break here. 
trying to recover some energy to explode. I'm sure that's what Vernon's doing right now. I, I, on the judges' cards, I would think so far, this fight is dangerously close. Very close, very close fight. I give an edge to Tiger White, but very close. Not an edge, though. I think that Ian Freeman can't turn around here in the next two minutes and 30-plus seconds. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. A good flurry here. He rocks him, he drops him, he mounts him, anything. But right now, I got Tiger. Oh, uh, there's an uppercut. Let's go. Larry Landless trying to keep him to push the pace. The pace has slowed a bit. Good knees inside by Vernon. They're, they're fighting for double underhooks here. Yeah, he oh. likes those knees. That's that Taekwondo background. That's actually Muay Thai. Taekwondo yep, yep. is uh, a little bit more very, crazy. Very few knees. Yep. A lot of goofy stuff. Some some effective techniques, which Vernon is at. He's, he's taken all the effective stuff out of Taekwondo and then added more effective Muay Thai. That's a great point. And that's what these fighters do modern day, Joe. They just add to the arsenal. There are some techniques that do work, though, like the spinning back kicks and the spinning back fist. And if a guy's not used to it, you know, a guy like Vernon Tiger White, who does all, who can do all striking, can get those in there. A guy like Shoney Carter and Matt Sella. Matt didn't expect that. You don't see that. Anymore. Right, right. So that's why wild stuff like that can get in. Well, the long-awaited debut of Vernon White. And he didn't have long to to be prepared to fight in the UFC, but he is prepared to fight nonetheless. He didn't have long to be prepared, but he was just coming off a fight. Yep. Very recent, long war with Jeremy Horn, so he's in excellent shape. And all the, those lines then, guys, they're always in the gym, they're always training, they're always ready to go at a moment's notice. Never too far away from answering the phone and saying yes. I mean, he's a professional go, fighter. Go. He's Separate. always ready to fight. All he's right. not the kind of guy that gets fat. Go Let's go. Here we go, final minute. Can someone leave that lasting impression? Oh, yeah. and the judge is Ian hand. Freeman. And he tries to connect, and he does. He turned Vernon Tiger White's head with that. But he's not following up. In my opinion, he should push off the fence right here and try to get some more of those shots if, if he's got the energy in him. 35 seconds remains here in round he's three. He's looking, he's looking to back up and throw right hand. You can see him looking at Vernon's head, trying to figure out where his head was, trying to push away. Yeah, see him doing it right now? Yeah. See, this is control, though. Vernon's not allowing him to do it easily, is he? And Vernon's throwing some very good inside knees there. Let's go! Let's take their toll. Very close fight here. Ten seconds remains. Freeman. Freeman wants some space. Yep, there he's trying to get it. In and Vernon's tight. tired. Vernon's a little tired, though. Freeman just can't seem to take advantage. Wow. What a, what a brawl. What a brawl. That's what you call going hard for the entire 15 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge Cecil Spiegel scores it 30-27 in favor of Vernon White. Judge Abe Bellardo scores it 29-28 in favor of Ian Freeman. Judge Tony Weeks scores it, 29-29. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is considered a draw. Stay with me. Stay with me.